Catholic as a young child baptized um, my mother and dad they moved away from the church and then um, they got into new age they were new age before new age was even a thing anyway so as I got older I got into um, like I was lost and I was looking for like Hinduism Buddhism I was looking at shamanism I was doing Eastern meditation I was doing like trying to open a pineal grand and uh, lucid dreaming and all it got me was <clears throat> A whole lot of nothing and as I was doing the search for the meaning of life I found that I just kept going to like Jesus Jesus kind of was like it was just everything kind of kept pushing me that direction a eh? because there was such a concerted effort against Jesus Christ to undermine him to badmouth him to destroy him that in my mind that leads to total credibility to somebody because you don't go after something that has no like um, strategic value you know if you're gonna destroy something anyways Jesus Christ came into my life in a mining camp in Collinsville, Australia, which is literally the worst place in the world. I, I've been stripped of everything. I had no friends, no family, no reason to live. I was so alone that he just was reading something about Jesus and he came into my donger man while I was laying on my bed and he comforted me. And I just knew from that point forward I'd never be alone. And um, so here I am today, many years later, praying for people all weekend, all week, <laughs> casting out demons, and then I had, 
like I was the one who needed some serious deliverance too, eh? So, um, anyways, I had a hectic deliverance. As I've been a lot of you cut last couple of years building up, hey, a lot of anger, a lot of rage, uh, a lot of situations. This COVID stuff, man, just really opened the door for a lot of bad stuff. And I reckon it's been hanging around for a while, built up, and came to came to fruition today, hey. It's hectic. And Jesus set you free. And Jesus set me free, eh? Hey. He's so good. God is good. Yeah. <laughs> I realized it, and I'm like, oh, and I was like, oh, it's because of COVID. COVID really made me angry, you know, the whole Rona, the control, the Vax, the whole, all the stuff, man, and they're messing with our lives, and I hate getting messed with and stuff, hey, and it just brings us rage, hey, and it comes back to when I was bullied in high school, and, you know, to the point where I wanted to kill myself, and I used to, like, you know, cut myself up, and I'd be like, you're a loser, you suck, you die, all that horrible stuff, man, and, um, anyways, so this anger, I was like, oh, it's, because of the Rona and then it's like the Rona I went out to the mine site they done me over there so all was dirty about that it's holding on to that man and then, and then I moved to the other mine site and I'm like I love my job but what they tried to do to stitch us up and I was like oh how could they how could they I'm going to get those guys. If I'm going down, they're going down with me. I'm drowning. We're doing the drowning man, you know? The drowning man always takes the rescuer with them, you know? So, uh, anyways, and so there's this rage, and then there's uh, other slights and perceived slights and just, you know, and all this stuff, and it's just building up, it's building up, and, like, I realize that I've been really good at holding on to it and really keeping it bottled in, and, like, all through high school and college and stuff, I never avoided fights at all costs. Not because I was afraid, but because I was afraid of what was inside of me. Like, there was a killer in there, hey, and he wanted to get out. And, um, anyways, uh, so I wanted to just back off and all that stuff and calm. And like, and recently, I think it's been filled to bottled up, and it's been to that point where I was starting to lash out a lot more and starting to lose that control over this thing, hey. And I would be like, like the kids that act up and up. Just yell at him. Just unload. And it was so shameful. I'm a man of God and I'm yelling at my kids that way. It's just disgraceful. I said, how can I sit there and be what a hypocrite I am? I sit there yelling at my kids. You fucking kids, you need to do this. Why don't you just listen? Why don't you do this? Hey, just oh so uncool. So bad. Anyway. Anyway, I was like, I need to get some help for this, hey. And I think this rage has been building up. It's been there for a lot of years. I think maybe even before high school, I got some things, some thoughts about stuff, but I'm not sure. But anyways, it's been building up for a long time. I've just been able to keep control of it. Eh? And anyways, and then last night, well, you guys, you got to, some of you all got to witness, witness <laughs> the uncorking. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking. That's a good term. We were witnessing, witnessing a lot of years. The freedom. The fr like, oh, I just remember like when I started doing the prayer. Hey, I've got a little bit of an anger problem. I'm a bit angry. And then suddenly, boom, hey. And I just remember like laying there and my hands, I remember screaming and like my hands were just like, you know, and you hear you hear these expressions, hey, fist of rage. Yeah. Oh, I was literally like, you know, the prime, and even like another one, the primal rage, like deep, deep, and the hatred, the hatred, man, and like you know, they talk about the Bible talks about the threefold, the cord, a threefold cord is not easily broken. And that chord consists of, what is it, um, anger? Is it bitterness? Mm -hmm. And resentment, right? I think that's the three, yeah? And that chord, and I, I've never realized how strong the anger, and the Bible says, don't let, don't be angry when you go to bed, man. Don't let that thing take hold of you. Because when it sets its roots in you, man, they go deep. And they go everywhere. And they intertwine with you and to the point man like there'd be times when i kind of broke out of the victimhood stage of my life i became the bull the hunter of bullies 
So I would literally, at work or wherever I was at, I would wait for people to start bullying people, and then I would just unleash a fury on them. Hey, I became the hunter of the bullies. I became a bully of bullies, you know, in a weird way. And uh, right or wrong, right or wrong, but that's what I became. And then, uh, yeah, so I'm always looking for this unrighteous, this, you know, people getting picked on, things, people not people not doing stuff right, especially for my friends and my family, man. I'm like a bit of a pit bull. I always... Like, you know, just I won't put up with stuff. Right? Anyways, um, yeah. Anyways, praise God, Lord. He's just so good. He's just mm. like. Who are you now? Oh no! <laughs> I don't know. I'm just <laughs> I am like this morning. I woke up last night. I started thinking of stuff. I start weeping, and these little come micro weeps now. <laughs> Literally, thought comes to my mind. I start tearing up, and then it goes away, and then I'm like, oh man. I don't know. I've been stripped of something that I've been coupled with for a lot of years. A lot of years, you know. This thing has been part of me, I reckon, since forever and a day. So I've got to, like, you know, let's, like, just let the healing process begin and let the Lord just fill these spaces that have just been pulled with.